What's crack? Big dogs. Bike for another waiver wire video. If you missed the running back version of this video earlier today, I'll link that in the description. Make sure you go check that out today. Right now, we are doing wide receivers. Fungal, right now. Pass catch right now. All right. Five wide receivers. Y'all got to be targeting on your waiver wire. Week four, 2021. Fantasy football. YouTube. Get all them keywords in there, baby. Quick, simple, painless. Tuck your shirts in. Uh, I just remembered I just filmed my run, the running back video, so my shit's already fucking tucked in, baby. Stop yelling, and let's see. This is actually an interesting week for wide receivers. This is what happens. Waiver wires are never exciting for wide receivers because wide receivers see their roles grow gradually usually, right? Like every time there's an exciting waiver wire ad, it's a running back because someone gets hurt. Like Chuba Hubbard goes in because Christian McCaffrey gets hurt. With wide receivers, it's like roles that are taken over slowly or we're starting to realize where the depth chart is or starting to realize how good a player is and now the offense is clicking or whatever. It always takes on multiple weeks for things to start clicking. And that's what we see with a lot of the players on the list today. We'll start off talking with Josh Gordon, okay? Because I know the Josh Gordon news broke yesterday that he is signing with the Kansas City Chiefs. What's that mean for fantasy football? I have never, ever, I've never been the person that's fallen for the Josh Gordon's coming back shit. I've never once added him in a league. I've never once dropped fab money on him, used a waiver wire priority on him. Since he was like Josh, since he was the 2014 Josh Gordon, I've never fallen for it. This is the first time that I feel an ounce of optimism when it comes to fantasy football. He's like, I think he's 30 years old right now, and he hasn't really put in a relevant fantasy season since 2014 or 15, whatever. Excuse me for not having all the fucking logistics in six years of Josh Gordon shit. This tweet was funny from Jason Wood. He said, uh, Josh Gordon's last and only fantasy worthy season was 2013. 19 of that year's top 25 receivers are retired. All 20 of that year's top running backs are out of the league. But yeah, go ahead and spend fab on him. thought it was funny. Most people who spend fab on Josh Gordon are the same people who have really, really high injury optimism. The same dudes who take like the lower threshold of a timetable of an injury return and think that that's where it's going to be. It, you, people are just wildly optimistic about fantasy football, best case scenario, uh, and never factor in the downsides, which is why I, I tend to always shy away from a guy like Josh Gordon. On the Chiefs, though, this becomes interesting. It always felt like he kept resigning with like New England, who, you know, it just didn't seem like they wanted to pass the ball a lot, especially to a guy like Josh Gordon. They had established types of offenses that they ran. It was short. James White, Julian Edelman, dump offs and run the ball. With Seattle, they already had Tyler Lock and DK Metcalf, you know, entrenched as the guys that they wanted to develop. In KC, yes, they have Tyree Kill and they have Travis Kelsey, but the rest of their offense stinks. Miko Hardman ain't it. Ain't fucking it, man. Josh Gordon, the last we heard from Ian Rappaport, you guys, I'm filming this on Monday night at about 5 p.m. Eastern time, so you guys might have heard more of this by the time this drops. The Chiefs are signing Josh Gordon to their practice squad with the goal of elevating him at some point when he gets up to speed. I'm assuming that will be within the next couple weeks. And the Chiefs' schedule over the next few weeks is the Eagles, so I don't expect him to be ready for that game. The Bills, if he can be ready for a Sunday night game where it's going to be a shootout, Washington, Tennessee, New York, Green Bay. So I think he can be ready, at least maybe see limited snaps by that Bills game next Sunday night. That's two full weeks from right now. And then start to get a little bit more ramped up to speed. That's probably what's going to happen. He's not going to go out there and be a full-time player immediately, but I could see him working his way into a role. Like you see this with Andy Reid, bro. He don't really give a fuck about like what your pedigree is. If you start playing well, you're going to start eating into snaps and you're going to start playing more and more. And I think that might be the case with Josh Gordon. So is he the number one waiver wire priority pickup this week? Uh, no, he's not. There are other players I would rather have in my squad because this is shooting for upside. But again, this was something I talked about all summer. When you talk about upside, when you talk about floor, you can't just say, what's this guy's upside and what's this guy's floor? You have to say, what's this guy's upside and what's the likelihood that he hits it? Along with the same question for the floor, along with the same question for the middle of that spectrum. And then you start to do the range of outcomes and then you start to calculate whether or not it's worth it. So you could say, oh, Josh Gordon's ceiling is like a top 20 wide receiver in fantasy, which is probably fucking ludicrous. Even if it was, what's the realistic likelihood of that happening? Very low, okay? When you look at the other guys on the waiver wire, I think there are better options. So with Josh Gordon, not using the number one waiver wire priority bid on him. Definitely not. It, it, not when we're talking about wide receivers. You're obviously using it on Chuba. Fab-wise, you, know, you want to throw $3, $5 on it or some shit, go for it. Dynasty, I would drop a little bit more just because waiver wire targets like this don't really become available that often during the middle of the season. But again, you could almost think of him like Michael Gallup. 
realistically. We're waiting a couple weeks because we're going to have to wait for him to get up to speed. And then he's probably going to play limited snaps for a game, two games, three games. And then that's if he's still good, if he has a starting role there. So it's very risky that you're just wasting time. You're wasting a, a spot. You're wasting fab on Josh Gordon for the 75th time, which a lot of you guys probably are. But for a lot of y'all, you're sitting there and like, I'm ready to get hurt again. And I fucking respect that. That's me every Saturday night. I'm ready to get hurt again. I go out to the fucking club. I walk in there. I'm hurt. I go, I go to the club with fucking band-aids knowing I'm ready to get hurt. All right. So y'all, I respect you guys that go after Josh Gordon. So go after him. I'm a lot more optimistic for some, whatever reason, something in my gut, something in my heart tells me maybe this is just a new, so I'm like, oh, I've been hurt so many times by these fucking little, actually, you know, we're not going to get into it. Just pick up Josh Gordon if you want to. All right. The other guys that I really like on the wire, Tim Patrick continues the ball out again. Five for 98 in this one, led the team in receiving, is running the most routes on the team right now. You have KJ Hamler towards ACL. So not only is Judy out, but Ken Hamler's out. Tim Patrick is a flex play that you can put into your lineup week in and week out. The Cardinals wide receivers. I want to say all of them are very, very highly owned right now. DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk, AJ Green, Rondell Moore. That is the order in terms of routes, in terms of snaps, in terms of involvement in the offense. It is D-Hop and AJ Green as the two outside wide receivers. Christian Kirk is dominating in the slot. Christian Kirk is a high-end flex play right now in this offense that Kyler has thrown for 289 yards and four touchdowns, 400 yards and three touchdowns, 316 yards, no touchdowns last game, but the yardage is there. And it is piling up to big games for Christian Kirk and AJ Green. I would much rather own AJ, uh, Christian Kirk than A.J. Green because I think his off days are definitely still ahead of him. And he might slow down towards the end of the year being fucking old and geriatric and shit. But both of them are viable flex plays at this point because Kyler is just playing so well, statistically speaking. So Christian Kirk, DeAndre Hopkins, obviously wide receiver one. I'm still not worried about him. Christian Kirk, high-end flex play. A.J. Green, probably a low-end flex play. Rondell Moore, until we start seeing more snaps out of him. Hard to get excited again, even though I got really unnecessarily excited about him last week. Emmanuel Sanders in that same exact range as Christian Kirk for me. Probably not available in your league, but if he is, he's someone that I would spend some good fab on because he's running a ton of routes. He is run. He was playing on a ton. Did that light just go on and off? This shit sometimes just fucks with me. Like in the middle of the night, I'll wake up at like 4 a.m. and the light will just be on. I'm like underdog. Like I know you want me to promote your shit, but relax. All right. Calm the fuck down. Y'all should go to underdogfantasy.com. If you're not already signed up, you can play some over-unders on Christian Kirk and AJ Green this week. And they got something awesome kicking off tomorrow for you guys on the platform that I'm going to be making a lot of content around. So if you're not already signed up on Underdog Fantasy, the link to the app will be the first thing in the description. Underdogfantasy.com. When you deposit 10 bucks on there and use the promo code BDGE when you do so, you're getting $10 matched on top of it. So you're going to have $20 to play with. Whew. So Emmanuel Sanders... Going to have blow-up weeks. Him and Cole Beasley. Actually, very, very similar setup. Christian Kirk, high-end flex. Emmanuel Sanders, high-end flex. A.J. Green, low-end flex. Cole Beasley, low-end flex. Other interesting pickup here is Nick Westbrook of the Tennessee Titans. He also has a third part of his name, which I don't know how to pronounce or what it actually is. So we're just going to say Nick Westbrook. But A.J. Brown is dealing with a hamstring strain, which means Nick Westbrook, 6'3", 74th percentile speed score, 70. 8th percentile breakout age in college, 16 yards per reception in college, a big play guy coming off a big game on Sunday, led the team in targets, yards, and scored the touchdown for Ryan Tannehill. Deeper leaks. He's someone to keep an eye on if A.J. Brown actually misses a couple weeks with this hamstring strain. We don't know the severity of it. Could be one week. It could be three weeks, depending on the grade. But stay on top of that if you're in a deeper league. Same thing with Kadarius Tony, man, because Sterling Shepard and Darius Slayton both have hamstring strains. Very likely that they're both out for this upcoming week. Kadarius Tony ran the most routes on the team in this one, actually. Actually, it's not very good, but he could end up seeing a lot of targets just by default. I think it's going to be a bump up for Saquon, a bump up for Kenny Galladay. But Kadarius Tony is a super explosive player, so he can bust off one or two big ones just from getting the ball in his hands. As a slot guy, they might check down quickly. Their offensive line is decimated. So Kadarius Tony, deeper league. Same thing with Curtis Samuel. He should be back soon. And De'Ami Brown has done absolutely nothing to secure the wide receiver two role there. So as soon as Curtis Samuel is back with that contract that says immediate wide receiver two role, whatever that means because Taylor Heineke is still the quarterback for the foreseeable future. I think I really hit on everyone that's worth talking about in this week's wide receiver waiver wire shit. All right, that's all I got for you. So hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And again, go check out underdogfantasy.com. You can go download the app. It's the first link in the description. And if you want the in-depth waiver wire fab guidance write up, that's available on bdge.store forward slash community. I love y'all. I'm out.
Wow. <laughs> 